Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Good Dram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Right, okay, time to uh, get back to tasting some Scottish whiskey. I think uh, we've done uh, we've done American whiskey, we've done rum uh, over the last couple of weeks, so uh, time to to get back to uh, tasting some Scotch whiskey. I think, and um, as you can see from the title page. Uh, this afternoon we'll be looking at uh, some of the whiskies from uh, the Aaron Distillery um, and this will be the first of a, a two-parter um, looking at, uh, at their range so big thank you to the distillery for uh, sending me samples and obviously the real reason we're doing that is to taste the, the uh, Devil's Punch Bowl 3, the latest and the final chapter in the, uh, in the Punch Bowl series which uh, um, I thought was I thought it had been pretty damn good in actual fact. I mean, um, I know uh, the first release was uh, criticised by some for uh, having a, a sulphur blemish, which I don't recall tasting uh, when, when I tasted it. Um, I thought batch two was, was probably slightly edged quality-wise uh, batch number one. It certainly had a, a, a softness, more... A more uh, I thought sort of one kind of had an edginess to it, which I, I really quite enjoyed. Um, but sort of batch number two was certainly uh, a lot more polished uh, in its character. And well, we'll see what batch uh, batch three or episode three or whatever you want to call it um, is like when we, when we get to it. So um, I've waffled about Aaron in the past. So there's probably no need for that. So we'll just uh, crack on, and uh, I'll introduce this afternoon's sort of lineup. Right, okay, so we'll kick off with the 10 year old, uh, bottled at 46%, aged in American oak. Always been one of my favourites, it has to be said. Um, I just love the, the, the exuberance and the, uh, the, the, the tropical fruit character of the 10 year old, so I'm hoping that that obviously is still there. I mean, as you know, whiskies do change over, over, over time, um, and you know, it's always interesting to come back and taste something you tasted a, a while ago to see whether whether the characteristics and the quality is still there. So let's hope that, uh, that the Aaron 10 year old is, is still on top form. Um, we'll be looking at uh, the 12 year old cast strength. This is batch number three, uh, bottled at 53.9. Um, now this batch comprised um, five first fill sherry butts, uh, 15 second fill sherry butts, and 31 bourbon barrels so um should hopefully be quite a nice a nice blend i remember batch one being very very good or probably um one of my, possibly my favorite of the of all their releases i uh, just loved the intensity of it so let's hope that uh, batch number three is up to batch number one didn't taste batch number two but you know well anyway that's uh, that's by the by uh, obviously, the next one in line is the good old 14-year-old, bottled at 46%, uh, aged in a mixture of American oak and um, uh, European sherry casks. And finally, we will get on to the Devil's Punch Bowl 3, which is called uh, the Fiendish Finale, uh, bottled at 53.4. Now, according to... Um, now, the interesting thing was that uh, each of the batches was, was a different selection of casks, and um, this one is no different. It's uh, three, eight sherry butts, um, I think uh, two, four, six, eight French oak barriques, and five bourbon barrels. So that will be interesting, um, because the previous two bottles certainly didn't use um, French oak barrels. Um, I know Aaron has had a, a bit of a... Um, a fetish in the past, almost along the lines of, uh, of Brooklady for for sort of weird and wonderful wine finishes, and and in part two of the, the show we'll be looking at the current core range of uh, the wine finishes they do, but that's obviously for next week. So um, let's uh, let's crack on and uh, toast the tenure already. <laughs> Right, okay, so I mean, I, like I said, I mean, I've always been a real big fan of the 10 year old. Um, so let's, let's see if the, uh, the nose lives up to that. Well, straight off the bat, it's, it's less, less tropical than I remember. Um, it's, a, it's more barley emphasised. Nice, sweet, dusty, not, not quite gristy, but sort of dusty barley. 
there's some there's some nice um, tropical fruit sitting behind that. There's some some apricot, a little bit of banana, white fruit, a little bit of now of building um, saltiness. Um, yeah, so really lots and lots of barley, lots of that sweet succulent dusty barley. It's really nice. A little bit of a little bit of oak vanillins as well. It's a real summery dram. It's a, it's quite a nice sunny Sunday afternoon, so it kind of seems quite apt to uh, to have um have this particular whiskey, I think. So so yeah, I, I think the quality in the ten year old Aaron is still still very very good, still up there. It's certainly um, like I said, one of one of, one of my go to unpeated malts. Um, so hmm, getting really fragrant now. That sort of apricot fruit, a little, little bit of honey coming through, just a just a smidge. Hmm. And some some nice sweet spices as well. Lovely complexity, really nice. Bow. Mm. Chewy finish. Mm. Again, kind of opens up, probably with again the sort of dusty barley. Um, a little bit more oak in actual fact, more sort of grainy oak tannins, um, which is sort of slightly holding in the, the tropical fruit, but it's definitely still there. Some lovely apricot, some citrus, some banana, um, a little bit of honey, some soft spice. So, um, yeah, it's it's not as quite as, not as voluptuous as I, as I remember. I think certainly with this particular bottling, there's a little bit more oak, kind of pressing in on the uh, on the edges of the, of this malt, and just just kind of taking away that sort of real exuberant um, um, tropical fruit character that I remember it having. I mean, it's still got it, obviously. Uh, there's still some there, but it's just sitting a little bit behind the oak now. Um, I mean, I wonder if there's a little bit of older spirit just creeping in there. Um, I mean, just because it says 10 years old on the label, that's obviously the minimum age of the spirit that's that's got to go into the bottle. If it says 10 on there, it has to be, like I said, the minimum age has to be 10. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they haven't used a little bit of older spirit um, when, when they put the fatting together. Um, or it's just one of those things. It's just that the, the, the barrels that they've chosen for this particular um, batch of the ten-year-old just just grip a little. Excuse me, just grip a little bit more, possibly. Um, but you know, either way, I really like it. I think it's a lovely, lovely dram. So you know, good start. <laughs> Right, okay, on to the 12, and as you can see, the, the influence of, uh, I don't know whether you probably can, but if you check the, the, the colours out, you can see the obvious sherry cask influence uh, on this, so it looks fairly light, so I'm ho not hoping, uh, or I'm hoping that, uh, I should say, that the sherry isn't uh, too um, overwhelming, but let's let's see what those give us. Quite subtle, in, in fact, the sherry character. It's kind of there... Just a little bit of, little bit of dried fruit, a little bit of dusty spice. But this is a, a, yeah, this has probably got a little bit more of the tropical fruit character that, that I would expect from Aaron. Again, sort of like lots of apricot, a little bit of apple, pear. Um, again, it's got some quite, quite robust and chunky tannins. Little little bit of chocolatey tannin. Again, a nice barley characteristic. The like I said the sherry is very very subtle on it, and it's just sitting in the background, adding that little bit of richness, that little bit of depth, that little bit of sweetness, a little bit of dried fruit. Yeah, I like that. I mean, that is that is a lovely crafted uh, whiskey, in in my opinion. Um, you know, really well balanced. Power. Hmm. 
Now again, that kind of opens up more on the wood. You're getting some toffee vanillins, um, some quite dry tannins, uh, some, some real licorice sherry wood character, um, some dry spice. And again, the alcohol and the combination of the tannins is very, very drying. I can sense that there are, or there is some fruit, some barley um, just kind of lurking there. But at the moment, sort of when you taste that neat, the emphasis is definitely on, on the, the wood. Um, so let's put a little bit of water with it and uh, see if that kind of uh, wakes the spirit up a bit, shall we say. Let's see what the nose gives us now then. Yeah, uh, I'm getting more of more of the more of the barley. Fruit has got a little bit oilier now. Um, yeah, it's kind of oily tangerine maybe. Yeah, bit of bit of apricot, sort of fruit skin waxy kind of character. But very bright, and the sherry is kind of like often. I often find this with. Um, cast strength malts that are vatting of American oak and sherry oak that when you put water with them the sherry kind of sort of like sl slinks off you know and sort of drops back um, but it's still still there still a little bit of dried fruit yeah but that, that's a lovely aromatic nose now certainly lovely sweetness yeah uh, and again sort of a nod more towards the, the characteristic of the of the old 10 year old uh, which had that sort of overt tropical juicy fruit. Hmm. Nice. Oh yeah, now that really has opened it out. Hmm. Broad, juicy, lots of fruit. Those tannins are still there. Chocolatey, slight, little bit of bitterness, but they kind of like you know again push to the background and and that juicy, rich fruit. A uh, little bit of dried fruit, um, some dry barley, a uh, little bit of malt. It's all now coming out, and it's just like oh, that's a lovely finish. That really is um, lovely balance to it. Like I said, a little bit of bittering, um, which kind of is there from the kind of almost like from the word go and just kind of carries on. It's not like the oak kind of recedes, comes back with the bitterness. The bitterness is always, always there. Um, but it's quite light and it just adds a, a piquancy to, to it, I think. Um, and sort of counterbalances the, 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 the sweetness of the barley and, and the juiciness of the fruit. And I think that, again, I think that is just a lovely well balanced uh, whiskey so so yeah yeah big thumbs up for that one I think right okay so on to the 14 year old then let's uh, let's see what the nose gives us on this then shall we you know, it feels an or, or should we say smells an awful lot older than 14 it's got a real dusty Dark honey, dried fruit character. Mm. That's got a lovely maturity. That really has. I don't remember the last time I tasted. Um, I tasted this. That it felt this old. Um, mm. There's it's mature, juicy, tropical fruit again. Apricot, a little bit of melon. Vanilla, dried fruit. Yeah, oh, that's just lovely. Again, I think, obviously, there's, I, I would say, a lot more American oak to, to, to sherry matured spirit in this bottling. Um, but again, the, the balance is just absolutely stunning. A um, little bit of spiciness. Not a huge amount of salinity, in actual fact. Um, there's a little bit there, but certainly not as much in, as in the 10-year-old. But 
Yeah, I mean, this is oh, it's a beautiful nose, absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you know, if I was tasting this blind, I would have sworn that this must have been in its 20s. It's got that kind of maturity, that sort of dusty, licoricey, dark honeyed. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that is good. That is lovely. the um, 14 year old having any peated uh, spirit in it but it's got a twang peatiness um, not hugely overt maybe you know um, if you're not looking or sort of thinking about it you might not have sort of picked it up but I'm certainly picking up a little bit of that again quite quite mature quite um, dark honey dark sherry spices um, not quite so overtly fruity. The fruitiness again seems to have not lost its fruitiness, but is it's kind of playing second fiddle almost to the, to the oak. Um, a little bit of toffee, licorice, um, a bit of chocolate, a little bit of that as well. Um, mm. Chewy, mm, nice chewy, kind of malty. Mm. Yeah, you know, full full finish. You know, it's not a light malt at all. It's got a lot of body, a lot of depth, a lot of character, um, and quite a salty finish. In actual fact, there's more salt certainly on the palate than I detected on the nose, um, and I think that is just really really impressive. Um, again, like I said, it, it tastes older than 14 years, uh, um, and it's got a lovely complexity. Um, so. Yeah, great whiskey. Right, and finally, the Devil's Dram. Yes, 666 and all that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> right, let's uh, let's see if the Devil doesn't indeed get the best uh, the best cast. So uh, let's see what the nose gives us. Whoa, that's got a lovely intensity. I'm really getting that grippy uh, French oak. I mean, I don't know if you can remember going back a few episodes now when we tasted uh, Spice Tree, um, which had the um, uh, heavily toasted French oak ends, and it certainly has that that similar gritty, tight, really tight tannin. Um, a little bit of herbalness, a bit of almost herbal rye-like notes, touch of vanilla, some butter, toffee, little bit of dried fruit. That's, that is really very, very good. Um, again, you might argue that it's, a, it's all about the, the wood notes, um, but there is some, there's some fruit behind it, there's some, some robust spirit, Some mature-ish um, dried, dried tropical fruit, but yeah, the emphasis is definitely on on the oak here, and that that Euro, that uh, French oak is just giving it that sort of a grippy intensity, which is really really interesting. But it's just so well balanced. Like I said, you, you can you can smell the aromas from all three of the different different cask types, um, and it's doesn't it doesn't quite have the polish of um, the second the second release, uh, which I think from memory was predominantly sherry cask. Uh, I think they used some sherry butts and some reef. Oh, is that sh uh, Either for yeah refilled um, sherry hoggies I think uh, from memory um, or barrels possibly, um, but 
Do you know, that is that is a really, really interesting nose, and it has that kind of um, edgy, a little, little bit of peat as well. Don't think quite as much peated spirit in that as, as the previous bottling. But it has it has edginess, it has it has vibrancy, um, and and a bit of difference as well. And that's that's what I'm always on the lookout for with whiskies. You know, you can taste you can taste a number of whiskies, and you know, think yeah, okay, it tastes like a Spay or it tastes like a Highland, and and sometimes you know, certainly if you taste them blind, you wouldn't have a clue where they came from. Um, admittedly, I think I'd be if I tasted this blind, I probably wouldn't have put it down as Aaron. Um, but it has um, it certainly has a difference to it. It's it's intriguing as a little bit of coastalness. Some some nice chocolatey notes coming out now. Yeah, that's that's good. I mean, there's no sulphur, no blemishes, clean as a whistle. Um, so, Mr. Murray, yeah, don't want to, don't want to see you going. Oh, bit of sulphur there. Because mm, I don't think so. Somehow, anyway. Mm, mm, chewy finish. A little bit of alcohol, a little bit of tan. Again, it's it's very wood focused. I'm getting a lot of toffee, a lot of vanilla, and that edgy, grippy um, French tannin. Quite dry, a uh, little bit of bitterness, a little bit of chocolate, uh, certainly on sort of the edge the edge of the palate. Um, the fruit again, the sort of like the Aaron character is very much sitting in the background. It's kind of like um, setting a kind of a bedrock to a certain extent for all the wood character that's coming through. Um, chewy, multi finish, really lovely balance. Again, you know, I'm getting I'm getting some sort of like some, some maturity, some youthfulness, um, some barley, some malt. That's good. Yeah, you could argue it's a little bit dry on the finish, a little bit bitter. Um, but it, I, 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 it doesn't really bother bother me overtly. Um, certainly, with uh, with certainly uh, higher strength whiskies and cast strength whiskies, you you do expect obviously a little bit of of, uh, of of bitterness certainly either from the cask or the alcohol or the combination of the two. Um, but it's cleansing, and it's not kind of like it's not puckering. It's not like kind of like you're feeling like you know <laughs> everything's kind of drying up. But let's let's stick a little bit of water with it and see uh, see if that uh, that makes any changes. Don't think we need an awful lot. It's only bottled at fifty three point four. Shut up. Okay, so let's see what a drop of water does then, shall we? Hmm. Now it's definitely brought out the sort of dense maltiness of the fruit, and oh, yeah, that's possibly sort of brought forward the um, uh, the sherry casks. We're getting a lot more dried fruit, nuttiness, um, but all the while I still sense that that grippy French oak tannin. But it's got a lot more aromatic, a lot more perfumed, a lot more of the the Aaron character coming through, the spirit character. Um, a little bit of light earthiness. Maybe there's a, there's a just a smidge, a smidge in the peak, just a just a, 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 an intimation there in the background. Um, but it's a lot more juicy, like I said, a lot more. A lot more of the sherry cask, a lot more dried fruits, sherry spices. Mm. That is just absolutely lovely. That is very, very, very good. It's 
still a little drying on the finish, but oh, that's got juicy now. Certainly brought out the American oak, uh, a lot more vanilla, toffee, but like on the nose, that sort of grippy French tan is still there on the edges, a little bit of dried fruits creeping in on the finish, the, um, along with the sort of the, the maltiness. Mmm, mmm, that is very, very good. Really enjoyable. Right, okay, so let's uh, let's sum this little tasting up then. Um, yeah, Aaron's still making pretty good malt in my opinion. Um, still love the 10 year old. Okay, maybe not quite as tropical and juicy as it used to be. A little bit more barley lead now, um, certainly on the nose. But still, you know, a really nice summery kind of, um, you know, pleasant, unpeated dram in my opinion. Um, 12 year old car strength, still, you know, I think that has to go down as one of my favourites. Um, lovely um, use of sherry cast, just to sort of give it that bit of richness, a bit of bit of dried fruits, a bit of a uh, bit, bit, bit of depth. Not that Aaron actually needs uh, any more depth than it's uh, than it's already got, but I think you know just a really nice um, use of, uh, of both American oak and sherry cask. Um, Fourteen year old, a lot older than what I uh, what I remember it. It certainly. Um, feels more mature it has you know um, a lovely elegance again really nice balance of, uh, of American oak and sherry cask so so yeah again you know and not not overly expensive at all um, very very good in my opinion and the punch bowl three yeah like it good you know I think I think all three releases have been very very interesting um, I think they've all had their own individual personality which is which is basically what you want really at the end of the day um, and when you have a sort of a large number of, of different types of, of, of uh, casks and uh, peated unpeated etc etc you know you hope that uh, you know that the um, George McTaggart maybe it's George McTaggart um, that, uh, that, that blends the um, uh, is the master distiller uh, James McTaggart? Sorry, oops, sorry, James. Um, <laughs> got your name wrong there. Um, has got at his disposal. You know, you you hope that sort of something really interesting and intriguing, uh, with its own sort of personality, is going to come come from that. And I think certainly, uh, Devil's Punch Bowl delivers that. It's got its own personality. Um, I love the use of the French oak. Um, I guess on its own it's probably going to be a little bit too grippy, a little bit too um, too intense, but certainly once you blend that with some American oak age spirit and some sherry car spirit, it it seems to do the job. You know, you get the characteristic of all three different oaks. Yeah, okay, you can argue that, that it is all it is very much oak focused, uh, and certainly neat that is definitely the case. Put a little drop of water with it and certainly the, the Aaron spirit characteristics certainly come through so I think all in all you know a really very very good bottling and not overly expensive I mean it's what 80 odd quid you know for a limited edition bottling I think is is pretty good value in my opinion and I know there's lots of people that have signed up for it and, and uh, you know are waiting for their for their delivery so they will come in due course so um, so yeah so there you have it it's uh, that's episode uh, one of, uh, of our Aaron uh, tasting session. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the show and you'll tune in obviously for the next one that we do. So um, what's left to say is uh, good drumming and good afternoon.